misled people about the name of the Most High, the name of Messiah? Was his name, was the name of the Most High covered up with Lord and God? And was Messiah Yahushua's name covered up with a different name? Yeah, I believe so. And I believe we are living in that time where these things are being revealed to us. So, in any case, um, you know, and a lot of people have boxed that video uh, on Sunday, boxed it in by just, oh, sacred name, oh, you sacred name, or, you know, and, and this honestly, it, this is one of the other reasons why I was like, okay, I've really got to do a follow up on this because a lot of you, a lot of you missed the overall point. It's, we're focused, this isn't just about the name, it's everything that comes with it. It's this whole movement. There's a movement of Yahusha and there's a movement of Jesus. Which movement are we going on? And I was really taken aback. There's a there's a brother that I love very much, and um, you know I'm not supposed to re be respected as a person, but I really do see his wisdom in these things. But I saw that he boxed me in by calling this uh, a sacred name, and you know it, it's, it's unfortunate. This very same brother is accused every day, and he's boxed in by being called a, a Hebrew rooter. Uh, or a Unitarian and whatnot, and you turn around and do the same thing. And so this kind of truth brings a lot of knee-jerk reactions, and um, that's why I wanted to take a little more time to talk about this. And you know, people call this call me a sacred namer now. I don't even know really what that means. You know, I know that there's a lot of people that misuse the true name. I know there's a lot of people that are that call me a Hebrew rooters, but I don't agree with a lot of Hebrew rooters in, in how what they teach and how they handle things. But yet we're being boxed in by these labels, being labeled as cults or you know, sacred namers or, or Hebrew rooters. When I don't agree with all those people on, on what they say, so you know I think that's uh, you know I think that's not the the right thing to do. So, and other people say that you know a teaching like this causes division. Well, let me remind you. This, this, this walk, this belief, what people call Christianity, or what a lot of us have been led to be called as, as not serene, you know, in these end times, wh whatever we're called, we believe in the Most High Yahuwah, and that He gave of His Son, Messiah Yahusha, whatever this is called, let's call it Christianity, just for familiarity, the sake. Let's not forget that Christianity itself is divisive. What do we believe? We believe that it's that the only way. The only way to the Father is through Messiah Yahusha. That's divisive. Messiah himself has said, I cannot descend peace but a sword. To set a man at variance with, I'm just loosely quoting him, you know, uh, um, mother against the daughter, and, you know. Do we, and I think, I, I forget who this is, who said this. Is this, maybe Steve Mutrio, maybe someone else coined this phrase, but are we to be united in error or divided in truth? I'd rather be divided in truth. And if me boldly proclaiming his true name divides, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but we're called to speak the truth in these last days. I'm going to be honest with you. Things would be a lot easier to not put stuff like this out, to not talk about flat earth, to not talk about, you know, commandments and Torah, and just preach, you know, the soft, easy, easy to digest, uh, you know, lessons that most of modern day Christianity teaches. But that's not what we're called to do in these last days. He didn't call some nobody like me to go preach that garbage, that that watered down lukewarm doctrine. Let's uh I want to, you know, as far as, uh, and as you know, for that video on Sunday, there was two parts. Mike and whole Bible believers, and then my part. Mike's part focused on uh, exposing the spirit behind and the movement behind the name. I think a lot of people just focus on the name and say, oh, you know, oh, so you're saying if I don't, you know, say Yeshua or Yahusha, I'm going to hell? Nobody said that, and that's not the point. Let's take a look. I think the end screen of Mike's video really... Hang on, let me skip by this commercial. I think the, um... The end screen really kind of culminated what this is really about. And I think a lot of people missed this point. And let's just wait. It should be coming up right now at 29, yeah. The Antichrist checklist. We'll call it the Antichrist spirit, if you will. Let's pause it right here. So, 
again, I believe that there's a divide going on. There is a, this movement of the of the true Messiah, Yahusha, that a lot of us have been called into. A lot of people that watch this channel, they're called into. I know we've got a lot of people that watch this channel that watch just to, uh, um, you know, to, to trip me up or, or just to, to have hate, and that's fine. That's fine. But for a lot of you, you realize that there's this Messiah being preached, Messiah Yahusha, and this other this other Messiah, as, as Paul says, this other other Yahusha is being preached, who's who's going under the guise of Jesus. This Jesus has supposedly ended the law, ended the Sabbath, ended the feast days, whose image is worshipped, who sits in most people's temples. Now, for those of you that are that that have your your entire life has changed around, you're following Messiah, you're following Torah, you're following the commandments, and you just don't understand. You know, I'm not calling. I'm not. This isn't this. That video wasn't to call you out. Is it? Was it? Was it made to show you the truth of the name and to encourage you to, to use the, the the true name? Yeah, it sure was. But it wasn't to condemn you. Okay, I'm not going to condemn you. Even those of you that believe in Messiah and just are are brand new and still haven't you know been led to uh, keep the Sabbath yet. Maybe you're still testing it out. I'm not condemning you. That's not my job. My job is not to be the judge. My job is just to show the truth. And like Mike said in the video, have I now been, you know, as Paul said, have I been, become your enemy by preaching you the truth? So what, what I'm really saying here is what Messiah are we following? And are we teaching? Are we teaching this lawless Jesus that the world teaches? Again, you know, what really brought this to mind was this whole Kanye thing. I'm like, is he preaching the same Messiah that I'm preaching? And looking at the fruits of it, and looking at the doctrine, and looking at what came out of his mouth? No, it's not. Just like it's not the same Messiah that I preached, Messiah Yahusha, is not the same Messiah that Joel Osteen teaches, and the many other false teachers these days. I'm not teaching the Roman Catholic made Jesus Christ. And that's the point of what this video is about. It's not about the proper pronunciation. Do I think it's important? Sure. But what's really important is your faith and your actions, your keeping of the commandments. And, then I, and, I, and I'm not backing up. I'm not saying that the name is not important. I'm going to stand on that. I'm not saying that. But I do encourage you to take it to the Father, to research it, to look into it more. <sighs> so again, do we follow the lawless Jesus or the lawful Yahusha? One thing that I 100% need to repent of, I need to repent in front of you, my brothers and sisters, is when I brought up the point in my part, a lot of you didn't see this because only 30% of you watched my part, which my part, uh, right after right after um, Mike's part ended, my part was kind of bringing it home and, and really bringing the whole point together, which is, you know, I believe that his true mark is... Um, the true mark of Yah is keeping the commandments, and the true mark of the beast is uh, not keeping his commandments, following this lawless antichrist spirit. But what I hear a lot and see a lot is, well, you know, demons flee at the name of Jesus, and I've seen miracles in the name of the demon of Jesus, and I don't doubt that. You know, I don't. And I repent because I said, what if that could be these end times lying signs and wonders? I repent of that. I don't. I, don't I, I had some time to pray about it and, and think about it. I've got to repent in front of you, my brothers and sisters. I think that was a wrong statement. With correction also from some of my brothers and sisters, uh, and through what the Spirit has put back on my heart, is I believe that those miracles happened, and those demons, they fled because of the faith that was behind that prayer, or the faith that was behind that um you know, the declaration for those for those demons to flee. We were once in ignorance. I believe that that time of ignorance is over. So, again, forgive me for saying that. I shouldn't have said that. And um, I pray you forgive me. But most importantly, I pray that the Most High forgive me. And uh, I just wanted to... Um, you know, I repented in prayer, but I wanted to repent in front of you as well, because uh, I needed to clear that up. I really did. So, please forgive me on that. So, you know, and as far as, um, <laughs> as far as, as far as, 
no longer being in ignorance. My friend, my, my dear friend Yanni, told me a story, and uh, you know this kind of hits, it kind of hit home to me. Maybe it'll hit home to you. Maybe you'll just think it's whatever. But so imagine you're at work and there's a new guy, and you thought there's a new guy that just started at work, and you thought you overheard his name is Ryan, and so you're calling him Ryan, you know, over over a course of a couple days. And finally, and let's say Ryan didn't correct you. He's like, okay, whatever, you just call me Ryan, I don't care. But one of your other coworkers heard you call him Ryan, and he's like, hey, his name's not Ryan, it's Brian. And so what, do you, what, what, what would you more than likely do? You'd probably go to Brian and say, oh, Brian, my bad. I've been calling you Ryan these last few days. Forgive me. Uh, forgive me. I'll, I will correct myself and call you Brian. Now, well, that's, you know, just a small example. Why wouldn't that be the same with our Savior? You know, we... Most of us can agree that Yahusha, or maybe you say Yeshua, whatever, Yahusha was translated, transliterated into Greek, which the Greek honestly butchered it because of the lack of letters and sounds to properly translate it. So it was transliterated from Hebrew to Greek, and then, then again from Greek to English, where we all know, it's fact, that the J didn't even appear until the 15th century. So, when we come to learn that his name, when he walked on this earth, wasn't Jesus, why don't we give the same respect that we gave Brian in that example? Just something to think about. So, at the end of the day, you know, is it really shocking that the Antichrist could come in the name that the whole world is expecting? Jesus Christ. The whole world knows it, you know, and something I've been thinking about lately, for a long time, I really thought Commandment 3 was don't take my name as a, as a curse word. So I felt that really fell in line with like what Hollywood was doing, you know, in almost every movie, you know, they use Jesus Christ as a bad word. So I'm like, oh, they're blaspheming his name and they're teaching other people to do so. Is that what they're doing? Or is there, are they making the whole world to know that name through that practice? I don't know. Here's something interesting. Um, in the book of the Ascension of Isaiah, and some of you may balk and say, oh, the Ascension of Isaiah, what's that? Uh, this book was actually, in, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about certain prophets, they were stoned. It's like Hebrews 11.37. I, let's just pull it up, actually. It's uh, just guessing. Um, Hebrews 11, it's either 37 or 38. I can't remember. Yeah, okay, Hebrews 11.37, this is talking about, uh, this is like the hall of, hall of faith. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder. Now, the legend has it that the prophet Isaiah was sawn in half, but there's only two places recorded in history where the prophet Isaiah was sawn in half. So where did the writer of Hebrews get this from? Was it either A, the Babylonian Talmud? Don't think so. Or was it B, the ascension of Isaiah? I'm going to go with the ascension of Isaiah. So let's read this real quick, and I just want to share a passage with you in chapter 4. And uh, let's see, chapter 4, we're going to read verses 4 through 11. This is talking about the Antichrist. This ruler in the form of that king will come, and there will come, and there will come with, with him all the powers of this world, and they will hearken unto him in all that he desires. And at his word, the sun will rise at night, and he will make the moon to appear at the sixth hour. This, the, these are the lying signs and wonders. Again, forgive me. And all that he hath desired, he will do in the world. He will do and speak like the Beloved. Now, in this text, the Beloved is Messiah. Okay, So it's saying the Antichrist will do and speak like the Beloved. Do you think that the Antichrist would come speaking like, like a devil? We saw in Revelation, the second beast, right, will have, uh, uh, what was it, horns like a lamb and, and speak like a dragon, right? The dragon being deceitful and he will say i am elohim and before me there has been none and all the people in the world will believe him and they will sacrifice to him and they will serve him saying this is elohim and beside him there is no other now listen to this this is the scary verse right here and they greater number of those who shall have been associated together in order to receive the beloved so the greater part of people that were that should have been uh, ready to receive the beloved he the anti-messiah will turn aside after him is that happening right now? I absolutely believe so. And there will be the powers of his miracles in every city and region, and he will set up his image before him in every city. Yes, I do believe the false messiah has been propped up by the beast, the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, and 
this is their image. So, uh, let's take a look at uh, actually a couple of things here. Hang on. So, if you have some more questions about the uh, the book of the Ascension of Isaiah, I'm going to put it uh, right here. There was a, oh hey brother Justin, I'm going to put this link in chat. And uh, I will try to remember to put it in the um, uh, description box when this is uploaded. Uh, let's see. Okay. What did I pull this up for? Yeah. So remember, you know, and it, we just read that the majority will go after the, law, the lawless one. You know, Christianity is not small. I mean... <laughs> What is it, like 50% of the world? Uh, I don't even know. Let me just look it up. World percentage. Let's look at that. Uh, let's see. As of the year 2015, Christianity has more than 2.3 billion adherents out of the 7.5 billion. Wow. So, this is not a small number, brothers and sisters, okay? Christianity is not the minority here. And Matthew seven thirteen through 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many, if you look at the definition of many, it's the majority. Many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And I'm not saying, again, don't take my words out of context, I am not saying that you that only if you know the set apart name you know you're you're entering through the gates i'm not saying that i'm letting the most high be the judge i'm not taking that that away from him all i'm saying is that let's look at what the word says and let's abide in truth together so we're almost done here just a couple more points you know there's some verses that talk about that he will reveal his name because it has been hidden from us and he knew it was going to happen this wasn't some scheme of the devil that the most high didn't know we've got to know that the most high knew the end from the beginning he told the end from the beginning you don't think he knew what was going to happen during these days of course he did that's why he also told daniel seal this up until the time of the end where knowledge will increase because he's sprinkling his knowledge on the on, a, on us some are listening some aren't but Ezekiel 39 says, So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. You are Israel. You that believe in Messiah, Yahusha, you are Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And the heathen shall know excuse me, that I, Yahuwah, the Holy One in Israel. That I am Yahuwah, the Holy One in Israel. So he knew that we were going to pollute his name. And polluting his name isn't just calling, does, isn't just calling on the wrong name. It's also could be calling on the right name and not doing what he says. That's also polluting his name. It's both. Isaiah 52, 5 through 7. Now therefore, what I have here, saith Yahuwah, that my people is taken away from naught, they that rule over them make them to howl, and saith Yahuwah, and saith Yahuwah, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Sure is. Therefore, my people shall know my name. This isn't by chance, brothers and sisters. Therefore they shall say, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak, behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy Elohim reigneth. Amen. So, a couple more ending verses I'd like to end with. It's bad English. It's quite a few here, so stay with me. This is me showing you that the word confirms that this is the right path. Again, I don't find a single scripture that says, my name is not important. Don't argue over it. Don't have divisions among you over it. Can't find it. Man says that. Psalm 145, 21 says, my mouth shall speak, spell, shall speak, sorry, my mouth shall speak the praise of Yahuwah and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Psalm 99.6, Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They call upon Yahuwah and answer them. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Moses and Aaron and Samuel call upon the wrong name? I don't think so. Why should we? 
2 Chronicles 6, 24-25, And if thy people Israel be put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall return, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplications before thee in this house, then hear thou from the heavens, and forgive the sin of thy people Israel, and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest to them and to their fathers. This certainly applies to us, because we're still in this version. 1 Kings 8, 35 through 36, When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee, if they pray towards this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, when thou afflictest them, then thou hear, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of the people of Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to the people for an inheritance. Romans 9.17 For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Hebrews 2.12 Saying, I will declare, this is Messiah, this is prophesied, prophesied in uh, Psalm 40, and repeated in Hebrews 2.12, saying, I, this is Messiah, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation of the church will I sing praise unto thee, unto the ecclesia, the kahal. And here it is. Here it is manifested in John 17.6. This is Messiah speaking. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine were they. Sorry. And thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So Messiah said that his name was important. The Father's name was important. He manifested unto them. Why? Because that time, at that time, the Jews were already covering up the name with the Hashem. You can't utter the sacred word. They hid it. And so did the Catholic Church. And so has Protestant Christianity. Malachi 1.6 a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith Yahuwah Sebaoth unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Call him God and Lord. Psalm 34, 3. O magnify Yahuwah with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 106, 47. Save us, O Yahuwah our Elohim, and gather us from among the heathen. Give to give thanks unto thy holy name, thy set-apart name, thy Kodesh name, and to triumph in thy praise. First Chronicles 16, 9-10 Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye all of his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, his set-apart name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek Yahuwah. Psalm 86, 9. All the nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Yahuwah, and shall glorify thy name. Psalm 86, 12. I will praise thee, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, with all my heart. I will glorify thy name forevermore. Psalm 66, 2. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Psalm 66, 4, All the earth shall worship thee, and shall sing unto thee. They shall sing to thy name. Selah. Excuse me. Psalm 5, 11, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Psalm 69, 34 through 36. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas, and everything that moveth therein. For Elohim will save Zion, and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there, and have it, have it in possession. The seed also, this is the seed of Abraham also, of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. Isaiah 56, 5 through 7. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of Yahuwah to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them. Remember, this is the whole package. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. 
Psalm 69.30, I will praise the name of Elohim with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Isaiah 12.4, in, in that day you shall say, Praise Yahuwah, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. How can we exalt it if we're not saying his name, if we're calling him Lord and God and calling our Messiah Jesus, which is not correct? Isaiah 26.13, our Elo, I'm sorry, Yahuwah, our Elohim, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. But by thee only will we make mention of thy name. Second Samuel 22.50 Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Yahuwah, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. We're almost done. Psalm 148.11-13 Psalm 148.11-13 Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of Yahuwah, for his, his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. Deuteronomy 32.3 Because I will publish the name of Yahuwah, ascribe ye greatness unto our Elohim. I think this is the last one of this segment. Malachi 3.16.18 Then they that feared Yahuwah spake often to one another, and Yahuwah hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahuwah and that thought upon his name. Brothers and sisters, i got to be honest with you. I don't know about you, but I want to be written in this book of remembrance. So why don't we have fear for him, true fear for him, and why don't we think upon his name? Think about it. You right now, If you think I'm crazy, and you think that I've gone too far with teaching these things, read what the Word says, not what I say. What does this Word say? That a book of remembrance would be written before Him for them that feared Yahuwah and that thought upon His name. They shall be mine, saith Yahuwah, saith our oath, in the day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall he return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Elohim and him that serveth him not. So, <clears throat> I got one more, actually, three more passages. Now we're finish this up. There's another passage that really has been sticking in my heart lately. And this is from 2 Ezra 2, 42 through 47. This was in the 1599 Geneva. This was in the 1611 uh, and many other versions of uh, the Tyndale Bible and many other scriptures. It's known as the Apocrypha, uh, but Messiah, Messiah Yahusha himself quoted this directly. And this is a vision of the end. This is a vision of those that are brought to the Holy Mount, Zion, to New Jerusalem. And in this passage, you will see the deeds of those that were taken to Mount Zion. I'm going to suffer with you. For those of you that, that hate this teaching, that think I'm, I'm lost or I've gone too far, let the Word speak right here and right now. And let these words penetrate your heart. I, Ezra, on Mount Zion... I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude which I could not number, and they were all praising Yahuwah with songs. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown. But he was more exalted than they, and I was held spellbound. Then, he asked, then I asked the angel, Who are these, my lord? He answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal. I'm going to pause here. This, these are they... Blessed are they that, are, that take part in the first resurrection. So again, these are they who have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal. And they have confessed the name of Elohim. Now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man that places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, He is the son of Elohim whom they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of Yahuwah. I'm going to stand valiantly for his name. Call me what you will. I don't care. This is what the word of Elohim says, brothers and sisters. For those of you that hate me, hate me for this message, let's look at 1 Peter 4. If you are reproached for the name of Messiah, you are blessed. 
because the spirit of esteem and of Elohim rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is praised. So this goes for any of you brothers and sisters out there that are going to repeat these truths and are reproached for it. Remember 1 Peter 4, 14. Regardless of what you do with this information, I love you. And I'm not going to separate fellowship with you. I'm not going to be one of those people where if you talk to me and you say the name Jesus, I'm not going to be reproached. A good sister of mine, who I love very much, and I'm really glad you reached out to me, sister. We still may not agree. Hopefully, maybe you'll understand where I'm coming from at this point. But she took the time and poured out her heart to me and gave me an example of why she finds fault in, fault in this movement, in this movement of speaking his true name because she was friends with a sister and uh, you know she had said the name Jesus and this other sister was like oh, oh I, I you know we can't uh, I can't hear that name I, I you know I can't hear that name and uh, you know that that's not who I'm calling us to be and I will say later on this same sister uh, came to her and apologized and said I was wrong and so on and so forth and and, and you know, again, I'm not calling us, just to reiterate, I'm not calling any of us to be the main police. But I am calling us unto truth. And I am calling us unto professing the truth. There's a fork in the road. There's a divide. The world, the world is being taught the lawless Jesus Christ. And some of us are being called out of the world and being taught the lawful Yahusha. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I'm going to continue down the path of Yahusha, the lawful Messiah. And I'm going to continue to speak the truth, regardless of how it's received. And I don't recommend any of us breaking fellowship with anybody that doesn't call upon Yahusha or Yeshua, that still uses the name Jesus. Let us be long-suffering, like, like Paul said. I'm going to read it one more time. I can't read this verse enough. I really, really can't. This is how we're supposed to act when speaking the truth. I want you to meditate, I want you to memorize 2 Timothy 2, 24-26. And the servant of Yahuwah must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. So if you think that people that are still celebrating Christmas and, and preach Jesus are opposing themselves, well, be gentle, patient, and apt to teach with them. Why? Because if Elohim, peradventure, will give them repentance to acknowledging the truth, not you, Elohim will do it. And that they will rec recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him and his will. Last but not least, thank you, Brother Scotty Sly. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Brothers and sisters, I love you very much, and I pray that you really now see the heart of what that message was trying to say. I love you. Let's let's pray. Let's bow our hearts. Our oh, Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, Abba, in Yahusha's name we do gather together and, and come to you, and I just pray that the message was put forth in the right way, and I pray that eyes and ears are open to this message. I pray that all of us be ambassadors of you, ambassadors of the truth, ambassadors of Messiah Yahusha, ambassadors of all the truth that comes with the true Messiah Yahusha in your ways. I pray that we can all speak the truth in spirit and love, not the world's love, but your love, your way. We love you, we thank you, we praise your holy name, Yahuwah, Messiah Yahusha, we praise your holy name, we bless you. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. Love you very, very much, and um, I pray you saw my heart in this, and uh, Shalom.